Good morning, and welcome to this service of Holy Communion from St. Bartholomew's Church in Cambridge uh, on this fifth Sunday of Easter. Let us pray. Almighty God, you pour out on all who desire it the spirit of grace and of supplication. Deliver us when we draw near to you from coldness of heart and wanderings of mind that with steadfast thought and kindled affections we may worship you in spirit and in truth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This opening hymn is number 182, Christ is Alive. Those of you here with me, please rise and join those who are watching on Zoom in singing the hymn. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and verbally magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, of <coughs> and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your Lord Jesus Christ, 
Christ to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow the steps of, in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated for the lesson. from the book of Acts. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, why did you go to the uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them, step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa, praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheep coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prayer, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, by no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time, the voice answered from heaven. What God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angels standing in his house and saying, send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remember the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I? that I could hinder God. When they heard this, 
there was silence. And they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The appointed psalm is Psalm 148, found on page 5 in your leaflet. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all you angels of his. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, heaven of heavens. And your waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. When he commanded them, they were created. He made them stand fast forever and ever. Praise the Lord who shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth. You are monsters and all death. Fire and hail, snow and fog. And tempestuous wind doing his will. Mountains and all hills. Two trees and all cedars. Wild beasts and all cattle. Creeping things and winged birds. King of the earth and all peoples. Princes and all rulers of the world. Young men and maidens. Old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For his name only is exalted. His splendor is over earth and heaven. He has raised up strength for his people and mm -hmm. praise for all his loyal servants. The children of Israel, the people who are near him, hallelujah. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, he is now and ever shall be. Amen. 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 The second lesson is a reading from the book of Revelations. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, write this. For these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the <coughs> Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The hymn appointed is number 529. In Christ there is no east or west. Please rise.
Last Supper, when Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. When Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Religious intolerance. Since World War II, at least in most countries in the West, such problems, misunderstandings, non-acceptance of each other have been sorted out. Laws have been passed, and major corporations, major countries have cleaned up their act or so we'd like to think. Thursday morning, I was reading the news on my phone. I never watch it live anymore. So much negativity. And in amongst the accusations and counter accusations and shootings and stabbings and war and chaos appear arguments that we thought had been laid to rest but have arisen anew. Things we thought had been settled decades ago are now flaring again. And no, I'm not going to talk about Roe v. Wade. I probably should not have been startled when I came across this headline. German airline apologizes after a large number of Jewish people are denied boarding. The incident is, of course, under investigation. But all that was known on that morning as I was reading that article was that those men and women who were by their clothes and manner obviously Jewish, and they were Orthodox, so they were dressed probably differently, were not allowed to board their connecting flight on what was them, for them rather, a pilgrimage trip. So why do we look at some people and see the other? The none of us and therefore to be scorned or worse. We do it now, still today, and we did it long ago. But in the time of our first lesson, we know the answer. We know why the circumcised were so angry with Peter. Peter had been teaching and preaching, but some believers, Jews who had accepted Jesus as Messiah, had gotten the wind that Peter was also Eating with the Gentiles, those non-Jews who had accepted what Peter was teaching, had accepted Jesus as the Messiah. So they summoned Jesus, uh, summoned Peter to defend his actions. But it is interesting that this one infraction, that one only, as they saw it, an infraction, caused them to challenge the apostle. Teaching with the Gentiles, fine. Preaching to the Gentiles, fine, but eating with the Gentiles, absolutely unacceptable. For Jews, including Peter, the observance of strict dietary laws was not a matter of ritual piety or cultural observance. It was more, it was a worship, a, a matter of worship and, and of identity in an empire that was not only non-Jewish, but was also often hostile to the Jewish people. 
dietary observances served as a reminder to Jew and Gentile alike of the distinction between those who were included in God's covenant with Abraham and those who were not. And so the religious leaders in Jerusalem received the news that Peter had been sharing meals with the Gentiles, and they heard that news and they were both angry and they were frightened. Because for them, Peter was not only blurring the lines between those who were God's people and those who were not God's people, so then he was forsaking God's laws. You know, this sounds familiar. We, like those early religious leaders, we endorse tradition, and we like that comfort that we feel from the old ways and the assurance of our rightness found in doing it the way we always have. And many of us know the rules as they may have stood when we were younger. No matter they changed. If it was good enough for our ancestors, it should be good enough for us today. If we, for whatever reason we justify ourselves with, perceive something or someone as wrong, well then, wrong they must be. And this is really a very normal human attitude. And you know, it seems logical and acceptable to us, but that's chiefly because we don't look at things objectively. We look at things emotionally. We get very caught up in what is actually our own self-righteousness. And this is the reason it's so very difficult to follow Jesus and this as he has commanded us to do. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in Him. And we focus on that word, glorified, a symbol in sign language, glorified, glory. And we react emotionally, glory. We think of bright light and joy, of, as my sister used to say, confetti and balloons. Isn't that what joy is all about? And the answer is that, of course, in our experience, it is. In most cases, we would only apply the term to great happiness. But in John's Gospel, in this passage, Jesus is referring to his death. For our salvation, he will be glorified on the cross. We who follow him are called to look at things in ways that are not based on our first emotional response, on our traditional reaction, on ourselves. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. Now, and we've heard this so many times, but we tend to focus in on it emotionally, on the cozy sound of it. We focus on that word love that we all interpret according to our personal experience. We prefer not to focus on the painful reality that loving selflessly isn't an easy way to live, that loving selflessly is embodied for us by a man who died a horrific and painful death on the cross. I give you a new commandment. This is not a suggestion. It's an order. The disciples heard that. All of them were Jews. They knew the law. They knew the commandments given to Moses by God. A commandment is a powerful thing. It's not just a rule of thumb, something one uses as a guideline. A commandment is meant to be written in the heart of the believer and live with body and soul. And now Jesus gives a new commandment. And it may not sound at first to us like an all-powerful pronouncement from God, but that is exactly what it is. No wonder the early Jewish community did not wholeheartedly embrace Jesus as Messiah. They are people of the law, what we call the Ten Commandments. The law as given by God to Moses. And Jesus makes it very clear that his is a new commandment. And not only that, the entire image of God has been transformed in him. As it was for the early Jewish community to accept Jesus as Messiah, as our Lord and Savior, means we have to make a 
shift in our perception of reality. And we have to stop relying on our own emotions and when necessary our established traditions, setting them aside and clearing space for the Holy Spirit because that will fill us and that will guide us. And this is not an easy task because we're people of the world. We're sinners, we resist. St. Paul fought back so strongly, God blinded him on the road to Damascus. Peter, too, resisted the idea of not following kosher law, and he tells the circumcised believers of this incredible vision he had that changed his mind. And we think, okay, that's great, we would love to have a, a vision or a miracle to sway us from our less than holy ways. But what we really need, we already have. Because we are the baptized, we have received the Holy Spirit. We have the gift of prayer, which is being able to speak directly to, and if we quietly listen, to hear Jesus' response. And don't let anyone ever tell you, God never answers my prayers. Don't let that lead you astray. God always answers. But we have to be paying attention because the answer is not always the same as what we asked for. Keep in mind always that the commandment is to love and that the glory of God was manifest on the cross. We are the people baptized and called to wake up every morning to be amazed, to be amazed by Jesus' commandment to us. And despite knowing, okay, it may not bring us confetti and balloons, we are nonetheless meant to be flooded with the desire to live by it. Each new day should call us to pray for the renewal of this commandment to love in our hearts. We're members of a living faith. We're carriers of a living spirit. And this commandment is new every single moment. And we cannot doubt this because Jesus has told us it is so. How are we going to do this? No one can have the strength of love our Lord has. But then we realize Jesus has answered that question too. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. We're not left on our own to conjure up concern for one another out of a determination of will. We're empowered to love through being ourselves loved. Jesus' new commandment is a revelation of our relationship with him. Jesus will always send us those new situations to deal with. Some of them difficult and new people to love. Some of them difficult. They'll not always be easy or comfortable or pleasant. Sometimes they're challenging. Sometimes they require we make sacrifices. But if we're doing our job, Jesus will fill us to overflowing with the love that we need to follow his commandment. And then we are truly his. We're truly his children. And by this, everyone will know that we are his disciples if we have love for one another. As the hymn says, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Let us pray. This prayer is attributed to St. Francis of Assisi. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. 
for it's the giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. And may the church be said. Amen. Amen. The service continues with the Nicene Creed. Please stand. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. He appoints the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayer hymn this morning is from Levis, number 14. Soon and very soon. Soon and very soon we are going to meet the King. Soon and very soon we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon we are going to see the King. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. 
page 10 in your booklet. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the parishes of the Merrimack Valley Deanery, St. James Church, Amesbury, Christ Church, Andover, All Saints Church, Chelmsford, St. James Church, Groveland, Trinity Church, Haverhill. We pray for all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are not alone. We pray for our President Joseph, Vice President Kamala, our Governor Charles, and for this community, the nation, and the world. All who work for justice, freedom, and peace. We pray for the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims, for victims of, of hunger, fear, fear injustice, injustice, and oppression. We pray for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those, those who minister, minister to the sick, the, sick, the friendless, friendless, and the needy. We pray for the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. We pray for our presiding Bishop Michael, Alan and Gail, our bishops, our celebrant JC and Elise, and for all deacons, priests, bishops, and other ministers. For all who serve God in the church. We pray for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We pray for our sick and shut in and everyone on our prayer list, in particular, William Higgins, Alfred Blaine, Jermaine Mears, Joan Morgan, Delphina Peniston, Austin Prescott, Pamela Logan. And are there others that you wish to be prayed for? Offer them now either silently or aloud. We also pray for all those who were affected by the incident in Buffalo this week. Also, we pray for my co-worker, Takesha Boykin, her family and her seven kids who lost her life through domestic violence this week. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. Please offer all your thanksgivings, either silently or aloud. For Jenny, our grandchild, is 50 years old today. <clears throat> 51. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Please offer the names of those you wish prayed for, either silently or aloud. Paula Bigham. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. 
who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we come to your For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace of the Lord. Hey, good morning again. Good Since morning. I was doing the announcements, I decided I should stay here. <laughs> <laughs> we welcome any visitors who are worshiping us today, either in person or on um, YouTube. Um, please join us downstairs for fellowship following the service. There will be a vestry meeting on Thursday, May 19th at 6.30, and it's an in-person vestry meeting, so it will be right here at the church. So all vestry members, please plan accordingly. We are looking for parishioners who are interested in joining the Altar Guild. If you're interested in joining the Altar Guild, please contact me or Teresa Howell, the senior warden. Our telephone numbers are in the booklet. And our church is having a fundraiser next Saturday, a yard sale, um, May 21st. It's from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, if you have any saleable items to be sold, please feel free, bring them on over. We'll give you a table, and all sale benefits will be um, benefiting the Simba Thomas Church. If you have any questions about um, the yard sale, please feel free to contact Great Rear or Sherry Darden, and the numbers are in the bulletin. That's it for my announcements for the day. Right. Now, um, birthdays? Yes, there you go. Yeah, are there birthdays or anyone traveling? Or, um, well, um, a birthday, um, Cameron, their strictest granddaughter, is turning 11 this week, and my son is turning 36 tomorrow. Yeah. There you go. Happy birthday, DJ. Watch over these, your, watch over this, your child, O Lord, as her days increase. Bless and guide her wherever she may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Raise them up when they fall, and let your peace, which passes all understanding, remain in their hearts all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, so we're ready to walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering as a sacrifice unto God. The offertory is in number 379. God is love, but heaven adore him.
But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sins of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days, you send to be incarnate through the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, 
and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error, the truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And we give thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and we give thanks to give them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, when it is the man of Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they be the body of Christ and his blood of a new covenant. Unite us to your Son in this sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things objection under your cross, and bring us to an heavenly country where the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Bartholomew, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and be unto you in your hearts by faith.
Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and evermore. Amen. And our final hymn is number 298. We know that Christ is raised and dies no more.
Hallelujah. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. 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 O Lord, support us all the day long until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then your mercy grants us safe lodging and a holy rest and peace to last. Amen.